Welcome to Cash Call. Listen live as expert sales trainers give actionable feedback on real calls while you learn coaching tips directly from the professionals. Good to see everybody. Dale Archdeacon, Brian Curtis back again for Cash Call this week. And uh, you know, Brian, I got a, a very special package shoved under the door of my office. This is all, this is all uh, theoretical or not theoretical, but you know what I'm saying? It's not in real life, but uh, so to speak, I got something slipped under my door. What I'm going to play for people today is something that not everybody gets access to. This actually came directly from Zillow. It comes from their sales reps and is given to the teams on Zillow Flex. And I don't know if everybody gets it, but basically it's a cautionary tale. Uh, which is like, hey, this is the reason that we now work on trying to answer these calls ourselves <clears throat> and the reason that we want you to use ALM and try to really sort of, you know, give more structure to how these leads get worked rather than just selling them to you up front. So I'm giving that disclaimer. I can't tell you what my sources are, everybody listening, but we're going to play this for you. And it is a bit shocking. Uh, I let Brian listen to the the tail end, which we can't play because this is a good family show. Uh, right, Brian? So we'll just I'll just put it this way. Dale and I have said a couple of words that may have offended someone, but we have not said these words. That's how offensive it is. <laughs> yes. Nicole Chambers said, play it all. Sorry, Nicole Chambers. Like I said, yep. I know my son and my mother-in-law occasionally watch this show because they tell me. So I can't. <laughs> it, in fact, is a family show. I can't play it. Not that my mother-in-law hasn't heard those words, but we're not going to play it live here. And hey, they probably kick us out of the podcast store and everything else. So yeah. we're going we're, we're going to play it safe. You know, Dale and I are conservative guys, but we decided to be conservative on this one. So yeah. Um, and you know, here's what I want to say: this call is so bad that when I first heard it, I was like, obviously this has to be on cash call. But how how are we going to do this so that we're actually learning something from it and not just like rubbernecking a, a highway crash, right? Uh, which doesn't add value to anybody. So. Brian and I are going to, we're going to take this and, and it, it, spur, it sparked a couple of things for me that I want to talk about. And I'm sure will for Brian too. All right. With no further ado, let's try and play this and not get arrested. Okay. So Brian, I'm going to hit play. You give me the thumbs up when it's working. Okay. Will do. Hi there, Alex here. I'm connecting you to a local agent now. Hello. My name is Ars. Yeah. Who am I speaking to? My name's Arthur. Glad okay. we're, we're bleeping out the name. Property that I was inquiring about? No. Let's see. Wait, I don't want them to miss this. Okay. Are you the agent for the property that I was inquiring about? No. That's not how Zillow works. No, you put okay. the moron. So what exactly could you assist me with? Um, I'm asking you what can I actually, that's my question to you. Holy if shit. I put the information specifically inquiring about a property, I thought mm. the whole, you know, back and forth on the text would have gotten me to somebody who can answer me questions about that specific property. You would think. Is that not how it works? What questions do you have, sir? Well, if you don't even know about the property, I feel like we're just wasting each other's time. This lead is like... We should reverse the roles. The lead is like trying to help this conversation along. And this agent is just dead on, between his ears. So I want to say for everybody listening, I didn't even listen to this part. I listened to the end where it gets bad. Um, let's let's keep going. <laughs> let's keep going, Brian. Listen to this. Just keep listening. And then we'll come back. You're calling and inquiring about 514 Bellevue Street. I'm asking what questions can I answer for you at that? If there are no questions for you, I'm going to ask you to have a nice night. Well, I do have questions about that property. Okay. What questions can I answer for you? You. Who, who, what is your role? Because if you're not the agent, you work for someone from Zillow, and your customer service skills are, are lacking, buddy. Just a little bit. Do you not want to work mm -hmm. today or something? Did you not want to work today or something? You asked if I was a listing agent. I said no. I said that's not I how it works. Please, keep in you mind said, that I asked, you asked if there were someone that could answer some questions for you. And I said, I well, get that. 
But if you so can't what is it that I can answer for you? The what can I answer for you? Explaining. What's your question? What's your manager's name? I don't have a manager, dude. What's your question? Answer it. Ask it. I just did. What, Who do you I work don't for? have a manager. What's your next question? Who do you work for? Who do you work for? I work for myself. What's your next question? What exactly do you do? I pay Zillow so that people like you will fucking call and um, I can speak to them. Okay, we got to end there. You right? miss that one. <laughs> That's We're going to have to bleep that one on the recording. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Okay, so that is given out to Zillow Flex teams as a cautionary tale as to why uh, you know, this is horrible. And this is why we take control over how this process goes. So Brian, for me, and I know this is still shocking. People are going to replay this and be like, oh my God. Oh, by the way, I'm not playing the rest of this call. Everybody, if you want it, you have to like email me. Okay. Or message uh, into the, the chat of where you see this being played live. And I will send you the recording. We're not playing it live here. It gets much where it will curl Brian's hair. Okay. Mine's already a little curly. Which is impressive because it's so short. <laughs> yeah. You can curl that hair. It's bad. But um, here's what I brought up. Brought up. Oh, you go. You, you go first. Well, here was the biggest theme for me. And, and I, I'm going to be intrigued if other people who are listening are getting the same thing. This reminds me of a fight between a husband and a wife, and they're both trying to be right. And the agent is much more the typical, I'm going to say this, the typical man who has to be right. So, I mean, and being a douche in, about it at this and being a douche about it well, at the same time. So he, he said earlier, you know, I answered your question. Actually, he didn't. He asked a question and he didn't answer it. He said, I have some questions about the property, something like that. Um, no, he said, I don't know. But then all he did was say, hey, uh, what's your question? He asked a question and the guy said, yeah, great. What, what's your question then? Are, you know, are you the listing agent? What's your question about the property? No, I'm not the listing agent. However, I'd be happy to, you know, just, wow. Uh, yeah, you know, um, Nicole said, this is my favorite call of the whole week. <laughs> and today is proof. This may be my favorite call of cash call. Oh In the God. four plus years we've been doing this, this might be my favorite call. <laughs> I I struggled with whether to play it because I'm like, this is such a travesty. I don't know. I, I, I feel guilty that we're like, this is like a guilty... It's like watching Real Housewives of wherever, right? You're just like, I can't, it's so terrible. I can't stop watching. My wife watches it, not me. But it's a train wreck, literally, right? <laughs> yeah, a train wreck. Yeah. So, uh, so, oh my God, it's so bad. But listen, man, I, I want to say something about this. I want to talk about burnout. How about that? Okay. As okay. a salesperson, we have a really, really tough, it can be a tough job. It can be very demanding. You can get screwed a lot of ways. And, you know, this reminds me of back in my, hardcore FISBO expired days. And, you know, if I had uh, taken a lot of punches to the face and I was in a foul mood or I felt like, you know, things weren't going well or lost deals or whatever it is. And the next person that tells me that agents aren't worth anything and that they can just do it themselves and stick a sign in their yard. I think I, there's definitely some times where I lost my stuff a few times. And, and I think that this agent clearly lost his stuff. So I'm putting a positive spin on this, Brian. I know I can see your face. I'm putting, I'm the lesson I'm taking from this that I want people to hear is that, you know, burnout's real. And even if you're like really in a bad place in your head, don't talk to consumers. That was going to be my point. Like okay, good. If, if you got kicked in the gut or some other part of your body part five or six times today, maybe you should just take the rest of the day off. Now, those of you who just like, hey, Brian just told me I don't have to work anymore if I don't feel that that's, that's not, not my point. But my point is, if you're going to talk to, because seriously, this is going to sound funny. This guy on the other end of the phone was pretty nice. I mean, yeah. like far more tolerant than I would have been. Honestly, I probably wouldn't have gotten into it. I would have said, thank you. appreciate your time. Hung up, called Zillow back and said, who is that guy? I need to talk to his broker. I don't know. That's probably what I would do. But yeah, that's you what know, you would do now. And that's what we would do now in our ripe old age where we don't get into, arg- into arguments with people over the phone anymore. But I feel like you and I both back in the day would have tore this dude a new one. I, I may have said some things back in the day that I regret. <laughs> But th- this guy reminds me, I-, I went and saw Ron White. I don't know if you know who Ron White is in concert one time. You know, 
You can't fix stupid. Okay. Yes. That was real. And I don't I, look, you know, we have fun on here, but let me be serious for a while. What that guy did was unprofessional and it was actually stupid because yeah. it literally could have ruined his career. Um, it, it, it just, oh, I, I'm dumbfounded by that. And, you know, we can sit here and laugh at it, but you know, when we look at it, um, I, I was in a, in a post yesterday about real estate agents and kind of going back and forth. And I was kind of claiming that we need to be more responsible for our own actions. So I feel like we are as a group, I kind of feel like we take care of each other and we help all the screw ups be okay instead of getting them out of our industry. But that's, but, but my point is I, we've got to have a more positive outlook on, 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 on talking to clients. And my guess is that this guy has zero positive outlook about talking to clients. Yeah. I, I mean, seriously, my 22 year old who's never taken a sales call in his life could have done better than this guy. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, uh, the, what I, something that, uh, another thing I wanted to point out is back when I was doing a lot of outbound prospecting and, <clears throat> basically getting punched in the face a lot. Some of the, one of the things I had to remind myself of, and I think that this would probably be helpful for the listeners who are still actively lead generating is I had to remember, you know, that I have had this conversation, like whether it's with a buyer, right? A buyer who inquires, or you talk to a buyer who doesn't know how things work, doesn't know how Zillow works, doesn't know how real estate websites work for God's sakes, right? or whatever it may be, you're having this conversation with them, it's really easy to get annoyed and, and just get into this mindset of this is stupid and, and obvious and, and uh, common sense, right? And get annoyed with somebody who, who doesn't know what they're doing or is, you, basically I had to remind myself, this is probably the first conversation this person is having about this, even though I've had this conversation a million times, right? <laughs> so that I could have more grace and, and make myself available for them as they stumble through this learning curve or as they figure things out or whatever it may be. Likewise, you know, this guy, <clears throat> we still have pe this, I, I don't know how old this is. We still have people that will call, inquire on a property, whether it's through Zillow or another portal or even your own website, who just don't understand how things work. And yeah. you know, the, the agent obviously needed to take it upon himself to explain to the guy how things work. Now, if it's Zillow, you just book the appointment, right? But if somebody's confused, you explain to them how it works and and what you're here to do, right? Hey, Zillow, I'm a part Zillow partner. I'm here to answer any questions you have, but most importantly, set an appointment so you can go and take a look at this property, right? Yeah, I mean, seriously, how hard was it? Are you the listing agent? No, and then hey, perfect. But I have access to the MLS, and I'd be happy to, you know, anything <coughs> that I can. I'd be happy to do some research on and get the information. And uh, yeah, what kind of questions? you have and if i don't have the answer i'm 100 percent sure i can find it how can i help you sir right. i mean ugh. so this lead, comes, the lead was explaining to the agent how to be a customer how to how, how customer service works so what what came up for me another thing is you know we talk about books and different things that we read and you know dale and i are both big studiers of different things like emotional intelligence 2.0 comes up like i want to figure out who this guy is and send him a copy of that book and, and for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, take a look at emotional intelligence. It's funny because what they found in the studies of emotional intelligence versus IQ um, with that intelligence quotient is that EQ is actually significantly more important for your success. On a scale of one to 100, I would say this guy is like EQ is like three. I mean, there's there's not a lot of emotional intelligence going on here. And so and here's another thing I want you guys to think about. This is something I talk to my team about all the time. This is my perception of how most people show up to make phone calls. The equivalent of a football player running out on the on the football field in street clothes at the at the at the coin toss going, I'm ready. I'm ready. So and that's how I think how most agents show up. And I feel like this guy was not ready to handle anything but the absolute hey this is bob i would like to see 123 main street at two o'clock today can you please do it for me anything outside of that i feel like the guy was not prepared for be prepared this is i don't know what this this leads worth but it sounds like this lead was actually a pretty easy lead like i i would kill for this lead it, 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 you can treat him like crap and he'll stay still stay on the phone for god's sakes i mean right I feel like this agent decided this was a bad lead. Uh, please send it to me. 
Um, I'll sell them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Send me, please send me that lead. I'll deal with it. You know, I, it, listen, it's a real thing, man. I, I have another experience that uh, I can share. And, uh, you know, it was, again, when, when I was in production, and I'm not going to name who the agent was that I was working with at the time. Um, and, you know, she got an inquiry. And I can't remember if it was on our own listing or how we got the inquiry. But basically, I, I overheard the conversation turn south and get kind of, uh, uh, what is it, like adversarial. But here's the situation. The lead was saying, oh, I'm the personal chef for this guy and he's going to buy me a house and it's going to be in cash. And no, I'm not prequel. I don't need to be prequel. He's just going to buy in cash. Right now, you know, getting a call that somebody's going to be buying a house for their personal chef, probably not. I mean, unless you're selling in Miami or L.A. or something or New York, probably not a common occurrence for most of us out here in the rest of the world. Um, so rightfully so the agent was suspicious, but then sort of got into it with the lead. So I go on the appointment, uh, with the agent, the agent starts to get into it again on site with the lead. And I was like, Whoa, just like, let me handle this. Turns out it was legit. The guy was, you know, wealthy, bought his personal chef, a house, and then proceeded to go on and sell and buy multiple homes using us again in the future, right? So I, as crazy as it seems, you know, I don't know, the agent just got triggered and couldn't handle it and, you know, thought it was a bad lead, thought it wasn't worth their time or wasn't legit, which happens a lot, you know, but uh, yeah. these are opportunities that that actually turn out. So let's, I mean, so Zillow, by the way, in case you guys don't know, if you're not buying, like if you're not a Zillow Flex partner, it sounds like this guy was a Flex partner. But if you're not a Zillow Flex partner, you're probably paying for one of those live connections on the low end, about $350. On the high end, about $1,300 is what I've heard. I don't know those specific stats across the country. Here's the reality. They convert at about 6 to 8%. Which means if you have a hundred conversations and you're good, 92 of them are not going to transact with you, which means I have to show up for every single one of those, because if I miss one or two, my closing percentage plummets. And Did you the say, amount, and, go ahead. Okay. Sorry, finish. If the math just doesn't work. Literally, if you don't show up for every single one of those because of the cost of the lead, you can't get an ROI on it, but you better be good on every single one of those. You can't, you literally can't afford this. So if it's in my market, this lead was about $600, mm. $600. That's a lot. So you said that's your flex conversion rate is six to 8%. Um, my, my, I'm not in flex, um, my, Zillow, my Zillow. Yeah. So I'm just quibbling. I mean, obviously it's the flex, but my point is you pay three, four, five, six, seven, a thousand dollars for a lead. I, you, I'm going to guess this guy may have been on a team and he wasn't paying for the lead and he, you know, or was it because seriously, well, first of all, I'm hundred percent sure he's not the team leader who got signed up for flex with that attitude but uh -oh. nonetheless he, he's and maybe it was just a premier agent but my point is he treated the lead like it was worthless guys we don't have a high enough conversion rate in this industry to lose any deal like it'll take a lead source and literally make the roi be negative if yeah. you do not do the right thing with i hate to say it this is a laid out this yeah. is a on a scale of one to ten this leads an eight Obviously, we didn't get to find out if he really wanted to buy, if he was pre-qualified or any of those things. But just my observation, a guy wants to talk to me, has a specific question about the house and is tolerant of bad behavior. That is a great lead. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And uh, I don't think that we even need this bad of an example, because I think that most people listening to this are like, oh, my God, I would never talk that way to somebody. Right. And I totally get that. But even more so, just think about Am I guiding this person through the conversation? If there's any confusion, am I resolving it? Uh, you know, when somebody shows up in a conversation, when a consumer shows up in a conversation with you, either adversarial or uh, they don't understand things and they make it your fault that they don't understand things, just take it with grace, move on because who cares, right? And I don't know who said this, but I like to remember this. You can be right or you can be rich. So I generally try I to be rich. You say that all the time. Who said that? Well, what quote is that? I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, I heard it in 2006 at a webinar, a seminar from a guy named T. Harbecker. But mm -hmm. I like this. 
By the way, that phrase, you can fill in anything that you want. Here's one for some of us who are married and say dumb shit. You could be right and or you can sleep on the couch, you know, or I mean, you, if you want to be, you know, you could be you happy. Mean, you could be right can, or not sleep on the couch. Right. That's what I meant. Yeah, screw that up. You understand. I mean, I, you know, I've been right. And there's a lot of air quotes for those of you who are just listening and, and still slept on the couch. Um, it. it you know, I, and, and I just remembered my, I mentioned my kid watches this sometimes and my mother-in-law. So I got to be careful about how much I admit to not being right all the time or thinking yeah. I'm right all the time. So I, now I have to censor myself. Thanks, guys. But, and and, and I'll, I'll add this one. This is one of the things a coach I used to work with said. I would rather be weird and rich than cool and poor. Me too. Yeah. I'm a weirdo. I don't give a <laughs> rip. Keep sending me checks, you know. <laughs> I, I, I like my life. It's good. Most people think I'm nuts. I don't care. Yeah. So another thing I like to say, that money, out. money will take the sting out of it. Money takes the sting out of a lot of things. But seriously, you can call me the word that that guy wanted to call the other guy. Just transact with me. I can take it. You're a blank, blank, blank. Awesome. When would you like to go see the house? Right. I'm good. I don't, That's I'm not attached to your beliefs or whatever. I'm just trying to close the deal. So, yeah. so uh, <clears throat> I, I would have literally, and, and again, the agent, Paul, but if somebody gets on the phone with you, I want, I want to t- teach you a little another little bit of trick. Do not say I'm sorry. Why? Well, those of you who have a significant other have probably told that person you were sorry and they made them more pissed off. I don't know if that's ever happened to anybody besides me, but you always say you're sorry. That's the kind of crap. So there's there's baggage around that. There's energy around that. And Dale's obviously he's never done any of this. So to the he's anyway. I'm doing the math. I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to agree with you, and I'm not sure where I can. I know that uh, sometimes if you use the I'm sorry and you use it in a tone of like, I'm sorry, but you're still crazy and I can't help you. That definitely right. doesn't work. I know that. Much. I'm going to apologize. Though, and all I'm going to do this is, hey, my apologies. It's it's the same thing, but nobody has any entered negative energy around my apologies. And I, and, and Dan, I appreciate it. If that's not something that happens in your relationship. A lot of relationships, people do things over and over again. And the other person says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And therefore they go out in the real world. Someone tells them they're sorry and it triggers. Them. So mm-hmm. I'm just suggesting it's the same like this. This is an, here's another word that in my opinion, you should never use with a client or a potential client. I understand. I don't say that because what they hear is no, you don't understand. It's really, it's a triggered word. They've done research on it in our country. It wasn't true 20 years ago, but it is now. So what do you say instead? I can appreciate that. Hmm. It's the same thing, but there's no energy and trigger behind that. And I know most of you guys are going, yeah, Brian, this isn't that important. Well, again, do I want one more deal? Yes. I'll take one more deal. And I'm pretty sure everybody listening wants one more deal. So I hope that makes sense. Everybody. I hope that was valuable. Um, I understand. And I'm sorry. These are not things you should say to your clients. I apologize. You can just say, please forgive me. Any version I'm, of that. I'm going to say you have to submit the research, sir. I can't, I can't, I can't sign off on it. So take right. it for what What's you will. Wrong when I don't disagree. Know. <laughs> I'm, in the, I, I'm sorry, Brian. I understand you believe those things, but I don't know about that. Show me the research. All right, I'm going to go and find the research because okay. someone has given it and, and I will bring it. And uh, that's fun, though. You know, by the way, guys, everybody who's watching, Dale and I don't agree on everything. And that's one of the things I love about working with him. So uh, no. we, we get the whole gamut covered. Yes. All right. So uh, I think the moral of the story is that was probably the worst call we've ever heard. <laughs> Try not to get triggered by people because they usually have money and you can get some of it if you don't get triggered by them. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm still, I'm still baffled. But hey, you know what? That's okay. I wish that I had some of my recordings from back in the day. Uh, we would have probably heard some doozies, uh, Brian, before I became enlightened and uh, ah, did a much better enlightened. job. Pre enlightenment, uh, we would have heard some amazing fireworks. That's awesome. Yeah, there was. Well, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, that was I a was... Nice story, but we'll save it for next time, Brian. All right, everybody. Well, we got two minutes, so whatever we you got want. To two do. minutes, Brian. Is there anything that you wanted to talk about in two minutes? These people need their money's worth. They need their money's worth. I would just say this: I'm going to go back to it. Create a pre-game, pre-game routine. If you are going to make phone calls, create a pre-game routine. 
Because if you have a pregame routine, it puts you in the same state every single time. And when the person is legitimately a jerk on the other end, you're in a good positive state and you don't feel like you just got kicked in the gut and you'll behave in a way that is in your own best interest. Doesn't mean you're going to win, but at least you won't have somebody cursing you out and saying and you're the worst customer service person or you'll just get, you know, again, you may not win, but at the end of the day, you can be able to say, you know what, I handle that professionally. Brian. That reminds me of something too. Yeah, have a pregame routine. And because here's an example, I just spoke with an agent today and they said, hey, you know, well, I mean, if I if I talk to a website lead and they say, oh, I'm not going to be buying for five years, what the hell am I, you know, what am I supposed to do there? And I said, well, why weren't they going to buy for five years? And the agent said, I don't know. I didn't ask them. Uh, <laughs> honest. <laughs> why don't you ask them? That, that's a crazy idea. That's something that basic. Okay. Why aren't they going to buy for five years? Well, I don't know. I didn't ask them. Let's start there. Okay. Now, if you had your routine down, if you were practiced, then it would be automatic, right? So a big thing that we teach is now sooner or logical next step. Can I sell you a house now? No. Why not? Right. I want to sell you a house now, or I want to sell your house now. Can we do it now? We can't. Why not? Right. Very basic concept. Yeah. And you can be a little smoother than that. And that's what, why you watch Cash Call. So you'll be a little bit smoother than that. But I will still take what literally the tone and everything that Dale said over, I don't know, I didn't ask him. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I'm not saying that you, I'm not suggesting every, don't go, don't go be like, hey, Dale was like, just ask him why not. You do it yeah. fancy, right? Hey, Brian. Yeah. How'd you come up with five years? That's a that's a lot of planning, right? Yeah. What's, well, what's the significance five of five years? Yeah, yeah what's exactly. important? What's significant? What's the benefit? There, if you there. guys don't know those phrases, what's important? What's significant? What's the benefit? Those are phrases that are soft, softening phrases that get people to answer your questions. Not, yeah. why are you moving? <laughs> why aren't you moving? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Hey, I said, how would I ask why are you moving? Hey, what's got you moving? You know, what's a, what, what's the, you know, what's it, what is it something else is location is, you know, oh, we're getting a new job. Awesome. So work on those, on those little subtleties. And again, I would rather have a person who's just bam, 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 bam. But I mean, just who's a little bit more graceful, but I'll take the guy who actually asked the question. Yeah, absolutely. Anyway, all right, everybody. All right, we, got, we get ranty enough today. I felt like we were pretty ranty today. I, so. <laughs> I feel like we ranted quite a bit. All right, everybody. Hopefully we hopefully we blew your wigs back just a little bit, gave you a little bit of surprise out there. Hopefully you enjoyed listening to that. Hit me up, just message or email me if you want the rest of that call because I can't play it here. Uh, and you can listen to how that devolves into badness. Worse than Dude. what you heard. Do me a favor, Dale. Email it. Call to me. I, I will send that. To you. I will send it. Play that for your call. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us today on Cash Call. We'll see you next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening to Cash Call today. If you like what you heard, come check us out at smartsalescoaching.com, and we'll be back again next week.